take a fabric first approach with Passive House. We're dealing with the envelope first. The cool thing about the envelope is if you design the envelope correctly, you then commission the envelope through blower door testing and thermal imaging, guess what? Until you touch it to renovate it, it's going to live on years and years and, and perform. And unlike commissioning a ventilation or a heating system, when I commission my ventilation system, I guarantee you six months later, I go in and test it. It's not at spec because it it's a mechanical thing. It's like your car, right? You know it's going to change. But the cool thing about the fabric is you put money and effort into fabric and you test and verify it, it's going to perform. It's basic physics. So we increase our insulation levels, we create an airtight shell, and then last thing is we get rid of thermal bridges. Thermal bridges are, are interruptions within the insulated assembly that, um, that, that resist heat less than the insulation itself. So for example, if I take a two by four or two by six stud wall, two foot on center, and I put fluffy stuff in the middle and gyp sheathing on both sides, that wall, according to ASHRAE, is an R19 wall, right? Now, if I actually calculate what the resistance to heat flow is across the studs, and I area weight that for the resistance to heat flow across the, re the insulation, the effect of R value, what that wall section actually performs, is R17.8. So R19, that's a reasonable assumption. That's not too far back. But if I take that same assembly, I remove my wood studs, and I just put in metal studs, that insulative effect, the thermal bridge created by the little highway that through the, through the metal studs, drops the effective R value to 9.8 because of the thermal bridging in that wall. And so we want to eliminate. That doesn't mean don't use metal studs. It just means you're going to have to isolate them with more insulation. You know, but what do you not want to do? As architects, what do we like to do? We like to thrust metal beams right through buildings and have them cantilever and express a structure. Guess what we're doing? We just created a huge highway for cold and hot to go through the building. We just created a massive thermal bridge. There are ways to deal with that. There's a company called Shock Isocorp that makes a connector. So you can get your architectural thrust, if you want, and not have a thermal bridge. Uh, then once we've dealt with the envelope, we start looking at our gains and our losses in a very detailed way to make sure that we maximize and balance these uh, through high performance glazing, proper shading, passive ventilation. And we look very closely at our interior gains, really critical for us in the uh, multifamily world. And then lastly, any systems that we put in like fresh air and heat recovery, uh, high performance uh, HVAC system, lighting, et cetera. All these things have to be taken to the equation to get us to the passive house. These are, it's a very simple concept when you actually get into it. It's just that it has to be a